Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everybody. This is Kristen, and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. And in this conversation, I would like to, to discuss with you um, visitation by divine beings, or uh, some people would refer to them as celestial beings. But before we get into this, I would like to thank Amelia Centara and her husband John, son Jonathan, daughter Emma, for supporting this vector and venue of, of outreach for this information to be given into the populations. And so, uh, Amelia Centara and family, in the, you know, from Ireland in the county of Kerry, or I should say the kingdom of Kerry, thank you. Thank you for providing this service for people. Um, I would also like to thank Eileen Laurel for her help and assistance in the many ways that she does that and has done that over the years. I would like to thank Liz, who is also who is organizing the Boston Kundalini Awakening Seminar. This will be the first time that this information has been given on the east coast of the United States. And uh, so, so Liz, I would I, I really thank you for that. And I would I would like to give out Liz's uh, uh, email address. It is L Z H A O six, and that's the number six at Comcast.net. If anybody who is listening is interested in in uh, attending the Boston Kundalini Awakening Seminar, uh, you would you would want to register with Liz, and her email is L. Z H A O the number six at Comcast dot net. And I would like to thank Liz for her her assistance and help in, in bringing this to life for the people on the on the East Coast. Um, let's see, I'd like to thank uh Barbara Berry for providing the the ashram that we are in. It's not a big, huge honking thing. It's just a two bedroom 1947 house, but let me tell you, it works great for us at this at this point in time. So thank you to Barbara, and I'd like to thank you to all of you who are listening. Uh, I'd like to thank you who are listening in the present time right now, and I would like to thank those of you who are listening in the future on the archives. And uh, so thank you all for being here today and tomorrow. And however many tomorrows that may be. So today we're talking about the visitations by divine uh, consciousness. This is not as uncommon as it might seem. It's it's a fairly common uh, experience that people have uh, with regards to the Kundalini. I mean, especially uh, when you're when you're deeply involved in a belief system, uh, and it can be any belief system, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the belief system that you have uh, today. It can be the belief system that you were raised with when you were a child. It can even be a belief system uh, that you had in a previous life but may not be honoring in this life. So if, if you were a Hindu in a previous life and you're pretty much, say, without religion in this life, well then, the Hindu uh, celestial beings may may come to you uh, in a you know in a waking vision. Now these waking visions are real. They are a real interaction of a divine realm and upon the physical realm. I don't want you to ever have this occur and then think, oh, that was just my imagination. Within a Kundalini context, there is no such thing as just my imagination. Uh, in many ways, uh, the imagination is real, and and that includes the detrimental ways when you when you let your ego get a hold of your fears inside of a Kundalini awakening event. Well, you can actually create a very very difficult scenario for yourself to work through with regards to fears. So you want to know this, you want to understand this, and uh, Kundalini is very much about controlling your mind controlling how you think how you think is so so very important 
And you get to have that control. No longer does your ego get to have that control. Okay. So when this type of an experience occurs for you, uh, you know, you need to take it at face value. Take it at face value. And uh, many of the teachings that will come to you from this will be beyond the spoken word. Beyond the spoken word. Um, Amelia, Santara, have you had experiences in these areas? Yes, I have indeed. Um, I was raised as a Christian, as a Catholic, but I haven't had visions from that experience. My visions um, came from what I didn't realize at the time was um, of a Hindu, had a Hindu flavor to it. So I, I saw what I now know were Hindu goddesses, um, envisioned, uh, particularly during my Kundalini awakening event in 2007. And I also heard during this time the word Vishnu, which I didn't understand what that was. I would have heard the word Krishna, I suppose, before, but I had never heard the word Vishnu. And this was also said over and over during these visions. Um, and I suppose I, I also found myself um, saying those words um, like a vocal kriya, and I knew that it was the name of God, and I knew that the visions were divine. I could feel what it was, even though I didn't really understand at the time, if you know what I mean, in a sort of a, a cognitive way. Well, it's interesting it was, that uh, the Kundalini would bring to you uh, the you know the religion of a past life, uh, probably knowing that the the religion that you were practicing in this life would not have any reference points for the Kundalini. That is very true. It would not have had any reference points at that time for me. Uh, that has changed, but it would not have had any reference points. As a matter of fact. Um, you know, with a lot, if I had had visions of, uh, looking back on it, if I had had those visions, um, I'm not sure it would have been, it would not have been helpful. Kundalini knows what it's doing, Chris. <laughs> 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 yeah. no, no, I, I, I can understand that completely. And this is not uncommon. I mean, even since that you and I started working together in a close teacher-student relationship, you have also had some waking visions, yes? Oh, yes. I have often had waking visions. They're not always of, of deities, but I've often had um, absolute waking visions that are completely real, um, you know, totally and absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, I just want people to understand that when they see uh, members of the animal kingdom coming to them in a waking vision, that is as much a divine personage as Christ or Buddha or Krishna or Vishnu would be. Uh, it's just an older version of the divine than than some of the uh, some of the uh, you know current uh, belief system deities that are coming in. Like if you look at uh, at uh, Hinduism, that is basically a uh, a, a form of a, of a shamanic belief system, you know, where they take elephants and they're taking serpents and they're taking monkey gods and things of that nature. And so shamanic, uh, you know, according to the region of India, where it was developed, you know, so many, many, many years ago, uh, would be uh, actually relevant to the, to the uh, shamanic cultures of Siberia and the Amazon Basin where they have their own uh, experiences with the Kundalini. And in, in the Amazon, uh, that much of that experience is brought about by the ingestion of ayahuasca, where the great serpent is typically seen, or bejeweled serpents are seen and can be communicated with. You know, they're not shy about letting you know where you're maybe a bit off and, and how you are experiencing and expressing yourself in life. And, and if you go up into the Siberian regions, a lot of the, the Kundalini awakenings and the, the, the shamanic vision journeys would be around the, uh, the Amanita muscaria uh, mushroom. And you'll have to forgive the other phone. 
ringing. I'm not going to answer it, but you'll hear it for a few seconds here. So like, the I have had, had, uh, sorry, Chris. Go ahead. Go I, ahead. I mean, what you're saying, what you're saying there is very true because I have had uh, waking visions of a black panther. I have had a waking vision of um, a wolf that is as real as my dog <laughs> that is in my home, um, and these definitely were. I mean, okay, they're not as I would have been. Um, as I would have seen deities to be, but they were most definitely from my Kundalini, and it was a communication from my Kundalini, without a doubt. Oh, sure, sure, absolutely, absolutely. And so these types of waking visions, they take form in many different ways. Uh, it will not always be the current belief system that is being honored. It will often be another belief system uh, that adds a little more reference point to to the kundalini that is occurring and one of the reasons this is the case is is due to the to the paucity or the lack of 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 real authentic knowledge that we have in the west of the kundalini you know we have we have people like gopi krishna and dr lee sanella and and a very few other others uh that have had the actual authentic experience and and yet even they go somewhat unheard of in society. And a lot of that is because, you know, when a person isn't ready to know about the kundalini, they will not be allowed to know about the kundalini. They may benefit from being in the proximity of a kundalini-awakened person or receiving a treatment as as, as Centara gives uh, with the kundalini-infused therapeutic touch but they won't know about the kundalini. They, you know, it's just not their time to have this yet. But they can still be affected in a positive way. Uh, with regards to some of the more known uh, objects and, and, and consciousness of, of worship, such as Jesus Christ, or Gautama, or Buddha, Krishna, uh, and, and, and many of the other, you know, like angelic consciousness, this is a very real thing. I've had the Christ, uh, we have a special room here at the ashram where, where Amelia was just uh, habitating and sleeping, and that is called the white room, only because, you know, it took me a long time to paint that thing white. But uh, it's called the white room, and the Christ has appeared in that room for students. And, and just, and these are people who have, uh, they had no idea who this was. They they waited to to see me the next day, come into my office and see a picture of Christ on the wall, and point to that picture. Who's that man? Who is that person? And I say, well, why do you ask? And they say, well, that's the one. This this person showed up in my bedroom uh, at the side of my bed, looking at me, and uh, and imparted you know uh, information about forgiveness and things of that nature and so with 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 this person you know she didn't even know who it was and so once again you know you have the divine um personage the the deity uh coming to the person through the awakened kundalini and begin beginning to give a series of teachings for a person and i say series of teachings because that one incident uh, it's a huge thing. It's a huge thing. It doesn't just happen and then it goes away. It stays with a person, and, and the kundalini itself will begin to work with that person along the lines of the teaching that was given. And some of the teaching is just the relevancy of having a, a celestial being there in your bedroom with you. The relevancy of that. Now, you know, and, and as you who are listening to this come into your kundalini and, and begin to, to accept the, the divine guidance from the kundalini, you have the opportunity to partake of these, of these uh, visitations in a much greater way. Yes, you will still be surprised. You'll be quite surprised. It'll be an amazing level of surprise. But... As you have been given this reference point in this in this radio show today, uh, you won't be as maybe 
blown away as you otherwise would have been. And this is not a bad thing. Uh, it'll give you time to to really be grateful for the experience that you're having, and maybe even formulate a a uh, a bond of communication. If if that is to be given, it's not always to be given. Sometimes it's just the presentation of the celestial being uh, there in front of you, and therein lies a whole series of books on the teachings of of, of the great masters and how how celestial beings do indeed exist, and you know because they exist, what their presence means to you as a, as an individual, and you know where you might want to look at uh, looking into and studying and, and reviewing the teachings of that specific individual that the Kundalini has, has invited into your presence. So it's very important. But here I want to give out the phone numbers. Phone numbers. This is if you want to call in and ask a question or make a comment. Uh, the phone number is 347 934 Zero zero two six. That's three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. And uh, uh, myself or Centara will we're, we're here waiting for your call with bated breath, uh, wondering what it is you will be able to add into uh, the equation of this radio uh, broadcast today. So Jesus Christ is fairly, shall we say, proactive in appearing to people with the Kundalini. Um, these things that he did, you can do and more. And this is this is an extrapolation from a quote that he has made that is written in the King James Version of the Bible. These things I do, you can do and more. And this is the Kundalini. This is... What we're talking about now is... is is part of what he's given to us to understand. And the churches, you know, and many of the beliefs, the organized belief systems don't want people to really focus on that because, it, it you know, it, it might seemingly take away some of their power over their over the populations that attend them. But Kundalini is that special grace. It is that seed of the divine within us that allows us to have these experiences. Many times, uh, a person will see the divine personage of whatever belief system, like, say, for uh, Amelia was Vishnu, uh, for other people it's Buddha, for other people it's Christ, for other people it's Allah, or a representation of what Allah would, would be. And they see this divine personage in a vision of unity or a unity consciousness vision. Some of this, you know, I mean, you're going to hear me struggling to put some of this into words because it goes so far outside of the speech, the verbal, uh, it's way outside of that, the feeling of it, the experience of it. It's, it's like, it's a form of rapture, it's a form of bliss and ecstasy and rapture, all, all mixed together. Uh, you'll see Buddha in every little grain of, 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 or a pebble of rock that your actual physical eye can make out. Uh, you'll, see, you'll see Buddha in every leaf, in every drop of the rain that is falling. You'll feel the Christ in the same way, or Vishnu in the same way, or, or Shiva or Shakti in the same way. You will, you will see, often you'll see an, an overriding serpent uh, <laughs> Let me turn this down a little bit here and put that out of there. You'll, you'll, you'll see an overriding huge serpent on on the horizon of your visual consciousness. You'll always see it. And it's it's very much like the Isis uh uh serpent from the Egyptian uh mystery schools, the, the Egyptian uh, belief system. So Isis overarches our human experience, and she's elongated in the way a serpent would be elongated. And and uh, this this is also also a way that people uh, are able to discern the the divine personage. And and this is a waking vision. One of my students has this waking vision, and 
And she will see this at will. Whenever, whenever I ask her to look, or she just wants to look for whatever reason, she will see the giant, giant ISIS serpent uh, uh, there. And, uh, you know, she, she communicates with it. Uh, most of the celestial visitations are temporary. Not all of them, though. If you look at uh, St. Bernadette, a uh, Subaru of the, of the uh, Catholic belief system from the 1850s, she was visited by the Shakti Kundalini 18 times. Now, of course, they didn't call it the Shakti Kundalini. They, they assumed it was the Virgin Mary, even though the apparition itself never laid claim to, to being of a Christian origin. Uh, you know, but if you look at the at the uh, instructions that were given to Bernadette, uh, you know, from from you know displays of surrender to to extreme piety to you know all of these different instructions that were given to her at 18 different times, uh, you see a Kundalini uh, picture emerging uh, within that understanding. You see the uh, and especially those of you that have the Kundalini, if you look at St. Bernadette's experience, uh, you'll see very, very strong uh, Kundalini signature in the quality and the type of instructions that were given to the 14-year-old St. Bernadette at the time. So it isn't always a temporary uh, visitation. It can be an elongated uh visitation and it can be repeated over and over and over. And so I want you to be aware of that and be okay with that. And especially, you know, if it goes if it's if it's counter to the current religion or belief system that you practice, you really want to honor whatever the belief system that is being shown to you because uh from a from a past life uh expression you will not have always been a Christian. You will not have always been a Hindu. You will not have always been Islamic. Okay. You will not have always been shamanic. Uh, you know, different lives allow for different spiritual experiences and expressions to be achieved. And uh, for whatever the reason, the Kundalini may want to show you something that is completely different than what you currently practice. And there is a lesson for you in that. One of the lessons being that all belief systems, all belief rituals and and pieties and books, the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, you know, all of the different books that occur, all lead one into the Kundalini. It is a path into the Kundalini, always. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, I see uh, Shruti. I would like to welcome Shruti. To Hi. The Hi. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call. How are you doing today? Good, good, good. Thank you for calling. How may I help you today? Thank you. Uh, so I'm, I've been interested in Kundalini awakening, and I, uh, if I was wondering if you had any guidance for me. In terms oh, of yes. oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. First that. of all, I want to congratulate you for even having the interest. Even knowing the word, you can see that as a form of an invitation for you. Okay? okay. Uh, most people do not understand. I mean, you have to get through a few barriers of ignorance first before you can come into the level of the question that you just asked. And the, the first one is absolute ignorance about, you know, the Sanskrit word of kundalini at all. Mm-hmm. And then the second level would be, you know, differentiating that from from Reiki or Kundalini Yoga, which yeah. which are which are you know different. very different from the actual awakened state of the Kundalini. So so Shruti, uh, congratulations to you for coming through those two barriers. Thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Um, so what would your guidance? Do, mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry. Say say again. Yes, yeah, so what would your guidance be for me? And then I have a follow-up question. Okay, very good, very good. The first thing I will, I will have you do is to begin a conversation with your kundalini within. Uh, you could just even call it my kundalini. And so you say, hello, my kundalini, I greet you, and I welcome your expression into my life. 
you can make those words a mantra. Okay. Uh, do you know what a mantra is, Shruti? Yes, yes. So you can make it's, words like that, or words that are coming to the similar way, a mantra. And then I will, I will, I'm going to guide you to the mm-hmm. Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com website. So that's Kundalini Awakening Systems, all one word, and then you put a, a number one on the end of that. And so that's mm-hmm. all part of the one word. Kundalini Awakening Systems One dot com, and then I will mm-hmm. uh, suggest you go to the left hand menu. And you'll yeah. see the safety protocols. It's about the fourth one down. Yes, I'm you, there right now. So <laughs> yeah, and, and the safety and it's called it. copy that off. Copy that off okay. two or three times. Leave a copy in your car, a copy in your bedroom, your living room, and really begin to invite Kundalini into your life in a very real and and present way. And follow those protocols. Don't just follow the physical ones, though. Yes, yes, okay. the physical ones, the meditation and the breathing and the five Tibetans, those are all very important. But just as important are the emotional, uh, behavioral uh, practices such as forgiveness. Forgiveness holds a very, very high place in the, in the positive functioning of a Kundalini awakening experience. So do your forgivenesses and forgive other people for whatever they have done to you and forgive yourself for whatever part you have played in it. And then from there, you can go into gratitude. Gratitude for the kundalini coming to your life. Gratitude for the people that have helped you along this path. And then you can move into tolerance and honesty and truth and diligence and practice and all those things. So that is where I would direct you to go first, Shruti. Okay. So here's my question for you. Um in terms of how you mentioned, you know, you have to follow these precepts uh, of forgiveness and uh, uh, gratitude and, uh, you know, all the other ones. How do you, and you feel like, okay, you forgive someone and you've accomplished that, but then, all, you know, time passes by and then the thought comes back again. Or, well, gotta, I mean, about gratitude, you right? You generally... In, um, it depends on, it depends on the, the, the uh, power of the experience. Um, mm-hmm. if, if, uh, if someone uh, uh, assaulted you in some terrible way, you know, uh, robbing you or raping you, uh, this, would, this would be on your mind for a long time. And so you need to give that forgiveness that will be equivalent to the amount of time that you may have spent thinking about it or or reliving that experience. And so in in the idea of a very harsh experience, your forgiveness needs to go on uh, for a much longer time than if somebody cut you off on the freeway and you just go, okay, fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so a and lot of it is going to depend on you. Okay. And that's the thing, right, that we so generally we are, you know, you work on forgiveness, but the people and everybody, they're still in your life. So there are still trigger points that happen, right? And once oh, the sure. trigger comes up and realize, okay, you've gotten angry, then you realize, oh, you haven't really, for, even well, though you feel it, you know, you thought that you had forgiven that person, you obviously have not because it's still triggering you. Um, well, actually, so it's, you, you have forgiven uh, them to the degree you can that moment, Right. Mm-hmm. But you can also still look forward to to rediscovering other areas within you that uh, reverberate with the need for forgiveness in that particular situation. So yeah, it it does. You do want to bring it on for a while. Uh, it doesn't last forever. You'll you'll get to a point, Trudy, where you don't really think about that one instance anymore. You jump to another one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That you jump, but it's still a trigger. You know, you or they do something and you get angry at them, right? So, um, well, yeah, I'm thinking it, about it, the previous it, situation, it, but it's like this situation. You know, you're angry, so you're like, okay, I haven't forgiven this person because but they can still if trigger still you. Your life, like say a yeah, spouse still or, my life, child, yeah. or something yeah. like that. It's they, family, right? they keep repeating. Yeah, if they keep repeating the same thing that 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 uh, same patterns, that works, right? Right. Well then, there's a level of tolerance that you can that you can bring into the situation because obviously they're not changing, and your irritation or your your insistence that they change their behavior isn't working. 
And so then, instead of becoming uh, revengeful or retributional, uh, then you initiate a level of tolerance and you see it as a as a way of bringing you to a higher level of your own kundalini spiritual experience by being able to not be bothered by that continuous uh, violation of your peace, so to speak. Hmm. Okay. okay. This is, uh, and what is that tolerance technique that you have found to be helpful? Do you just say, okay, I just... What have you used? Uh, what you do is you control tolerance? your thoughts. You, and if you control your thinking, you, you can in many ways control how you feel about a certain thing. So if you change your thoughts around whatever that... Uh, that problem is that somebody is giving to you, if you change your thoughts around it, you change the level of motion around it, uh, you can turn it into a very positive uh, uh, spiritual experience for yourself. You have to change the way. So let's say, uh, oh, Kristen, you know, you're chewing gum while you're giving your interview and it's really irritating me when you blow those bubbles and you snap, pop them, and oh my gosh, can you just like spit it out? Yes. Yes, it's triggers like that, right? Triggers the small right, things exactly. like that. And you you notice yourself right. getting so, angry, you know, getting irritated. So it's like, okay. So, okay. so and of course, okay. and of course, you know, you're, you're saying that to me uh, while you're listening to the show, so I don't hear you. And I keep on doing it. <laughs> Okay, yes, exactly. and then, and then you know, as, as as I keep on doing it, you hear the smack, 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 pop, 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 smack, pop. Uh, you begin to you, you begin. To, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna change my thoughts around this. Every time mm-hmm. I hear him smack and pop, I'm gonna feel it as a bubble of kundalini that is releasing in me and purging me of this irritation that I have with his behavior. I'm gonna forgive him, and I'm gonna tolerate it. Not only will I tolerate it. I'm going to turn it into something positive for me, and boom! Okay. There you've just you've just you've just uh, totally uh, healed the situation for yourself. You, you know, you're mm-hmm. coming out uh, very much ahead of the game when you're able to change an irritation into a positivity. Mm-hmm. It's more into a joy or something. Yeah. Fun. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's that's a good suggestion. So thank you for that. The other question I have is regarding heat sensations. Is that also a sign of Kundalini, or very often, yes, uh, very often uh, the, the you'll feel heat in the in the bottoms of the soles of your feet, the palms of your hand, the top of your head. Often it will move of its own to different parts of the body, and sometimes, sometimes mm-hmm. you'll feel extreme heat in those areas. Uh, complemented by extreme cold or extreme frigidity, and as this as this frigid, extreme cold uh, courses up the, the the spine or or is uh, in, the, in the top of the head or the palms of the feet, you'll get this great uh, level of, of hot cold, hot cold, hot cold, hot cold everywhere. You know, in addition with a cool breeze being blown into your face. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it can come in different mm-hmm. ways, but the heat, yes, the heat is an activity of the sacred male, and uh, and the heat is a very common feature of a kundalini awakening. Okay. okay. Do you have that, Trudy? So, Do you have that? I have that, but not uh, not like the symptoms you mentioned. It's more where it's in my heart chakra. It just gets unbelievably hot, and... Really I sometimes hot. also felt, yeah, uh, get, uh, I've also noticed in my, um, on my forehead, more for third eye and the crown, it's like, oh, and that's that, wonderful. Uh, yeah. that, that becomes I, so hot I, I, that it's I, like it affects the whole face. I can, I mean, the source is over there, but I can feel the heat on the whole face. Are you, feeling a deep, deep, are you feeling deep experiences of love? A uh, deep experience of love. I in fact I had felt that a few years back, but uh, that had happened a, over a course of three nights. But I've not felt that again. So it's um, and I was wondering if we maybe have imagined it, but that is what had triggered me to start uh, becoming more serious about getting more interested in Kundalini. 
that experience. Oh, well, well, there you go. Then it served it. The oneness and the, yeah, uh, it, it, the oneness yeah, and the knowing of, you know. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, no. interrupt. Exactly. It served its purpose for you. I don't want you to wait for that loving embrace of of everybody and everything to, to make its appearance uh, for you again. I want you to just go right out into that. You remember what it felt like. And so now replicate that feeling through your loving interpretation and interaction with people and, and the environment, social and environmental around you. Step mm. right into it, okay? Okay, okay. I'll try. I try to use that as a as a guidance, but it's tough because that is that feeling was so. Uh, you can't explain it. You just cannot explain it. You are you are in there, and um, it's an experience. That's all I can say. Um, and trying to recreate that, um, it's difficult. But well, I would like to be there. I definitely want to be what, what, there. What what you'll do, what you'll do to recreate that is to. Because you're feeling the heat in your heart chakra, uh, whenever you feel that heat is when you will coincide that intentional appreciation of the all that is in your heart. Mm -hmm. So whenever you feel that heat, bring on that appreciation, that gratitude, and let oh, okay. that begin to take its take its control over you. Ah, okay. That's a very good suggestion. That's a very good Thank you for that. You're very Thank welcome, you Thank you. Uh, so I'll keep on listening to you. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you for calling in. Thanks. Okay. I would like to say thank you, Shruti, for calling in, and thank you for listening today. Uh, and if anybody else would like to call in, the call-in number is 347-934-0026. And I uh, welcome any and all calls. Uh, you know, about the Kundalini, you know, like Shruti. She has very, very good questions about the Kundalini, and I, I want to thank her and honor her for her, her thoughtful uh, questions regarding this this amazing divine experience that we all have the opportunity to have. Uh, you know, these are the type of teachings uh, that the Kundalini will, will bring into a person as a visitation from a celestial divine being. Uh, Christ is, is very much, uh, uh, well, from my experience, very much along the lines of forgiveness. Uh, if you see the bejeweled snakes uh, or the serpents, giant uh, anaconda type uh, serpents, well, they will tell you maybe that you're 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 too wrapped up into your mental mind. You're, you're you have far too much of an ego based appreciation of your own mental prowess, and they'll come right out and tell you you don't know so much. They'll say that to you. They'll say, you don't know so much. And then they'll start to, to, to show you how it is that you don't know so much. <laughs> so you gotta, you got to be careful not to get so wrapped up into the, the jewels, the beautiful, beautiful colors and, and, and shine and sparkle of, of the skin on these serpents. I mean, these are ayahuasca serpents. And, and you know, it can be very, very... Uh, exhilarating and, 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 and take your mind off of, of some of the questions that you might want to ask or some of the things that they want to say to you. I have seen uh, snakes like these, only mine have been much, much larger than something that would just share the same ground with you. Mine might have been the size of a planet. And so all the conversation take place in space. And yes, yes, even though it's not of the planet, it you you see it, you experience it in a double reality. So here I am, you know, giving this radio uh, uh, interview right now, and and at the same time, I'm having the conversation with the Shakti serpent uh, in, in a in a in a place of space uh, outside uh, outside, say, the Earth orbit. <laughs> I know how that might sound to people. <laughs> and I invite you to make all the jokes possible. I think it's pretty good. But anyway, um, yeah, these celestial divine experiences last a lifetime. They never go away. They're like burned 
into your into your awareness, and they really provide an excellent fulcrum uh, uh, for a person, say like Trudy, who who has been who has received the invitation to come deeper into the Kundalini, and so when when she experiences a divine personage that is suitable to her, as through the the uh, the expression of her own Kundalini, well then she that that experience will be imprinted onto her soul and it will be something that constantly gives her a level of guidance and assurance that she is indeed on a divine path and that there is no more a need to to follow say the psychological uh, uh you know assumption that oh it was just the imagination there is as i mentioned earlier there is no Oh, it was just the imagination. These things are real. They're just not real in the same five sense way that a scientist or, or an MD or PhD might might understand things as being. And uh, you know, those are the folks who kind of set the standard for what is real and isn't real on our planet for many people. And and and, I, and I'm just going to tell you straight up that it's not the case. That is not, uh, that is a very limited and narrow uh, understanding of, uh, of the multiverse and of creation. And, uh, you know, even though they recognize, you know, more than a few dimensions, they don't recognize the, the uh, collected creation of each of those dimensions and how they may... Uh, interact with our dimension here. Uh, Pre-Kundalini, yes, you may have some dreams that are of a fantastic nature, and you may have uh, you may have some some dreams that are experiences that are, are, are suggestive of, say, a, a typical work environment or something of that nature. After the Kundalini comes, though, there is no such thing uh, as a dream that does not have a Kundalini imprint and teaching upon it. And many times, these celestial beings that come to you will remind you of a dream that you had. You know, remember the dream that you had when you were flying over a lake of, uh, a clear water lake full of beautiful orange goldfish. Do you remember that? You know, and, and you'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, because immediately the memory will come to mind. And the, the, the divine personage may say something on the level of, yes, this is your uh, opportunity to express creativity uh, of life within your life. Uh, create something that is helpful to another person. Create a beautiful work of art. Create a child. Create, create something with uh, a divine inspiration. And, you know, if you follow this, you will go out and you will do such a thing. Uh, it doesn't have to be any one or all of the above, but it has to be something that that uh, would correlate with with what the the clear water and the orange of the fish and the fact that it's a fish swimming through the water and the divine, is, the divine personage is pointing out these many, 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 many different facets and opportunities of teaching and learning that this particular vision would have. And yes, yes, I did have this vision. This is from from my own experience. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Santara, do you have anything to add? <laughs> I was I was wondering if you were going to ask me, and I thought in that moment I've gone completely blank. If you can remember anything that you want to share about me, please feel free. The the one thing I I wouldn't mind sharing actually was um, a vision, a waking vision that happened recently during my trip uh, with regard to the spider. Would that be okay? That would be fine. Okay. Well, um, I was in a room. Give them give them give them the background, uh, uh, Centaur. Par- pardon me for interrupting. Give them the, okay. uh, a complete background of what's going on here. Okay. Well, I was in. Um, I was on my trip, and we were visiting Tombstone, Arizona, and um, we were staying at a, 
uh, hotel that was very old and we were told that it was haunted and we were aware of this and we also were aware in Tombstone of entities being present um, all over the place. I mean, we were very aware of it and um, that night I was inside in the room and the door opened directly onto the street and suddenly I could see through the door and this isn't a dream. This this is one of those that I could see through the door and outside the door um, a spider, you know, began to form, began to grow up and I knew that it was the Kundalini spider. It was Kundalini manifesting in the form of a spider and it was huge. It was not quite as tall as a person but it covered the whole door and I knew that it was there as um, as a protection, that it was there um, between me, between us and the entities that were moving in a very threatening way up and down the street. And just after that, I heard a very, um, a noise I had never heard before, and it travelled down the street and it travelled up the street. And I, I was so aware and I could see big kundalini spider standing outside the door for me and in that also I knew that that is always the case for me always the case for me yes and yeah. before we even uh, checked into that motel um, we drove through town going well what, what's the big deal about Tombstone Arizona neither of us mm-hmm. having been there before and uh you know, we pulled up outside the city limits, reflecting on what we've just driven through, and was basically maybe, well, there was one hotel, I think, one cafe, and we wondered what the big deal was. And uh, the the gentleman said, "Oh, you went past the budget motel. Well, that's the one where I work at. I'm an assistant manager there." And uh, so, of course, we we, you know, he gave us a few pointers on where to see. You know the, the OK Corral and all of those things. And for those for those who are uh, listening internationally, in the 1880s there was a big gunfight uh, by armed men uh, with copious amounts of whiskey in them. I might add, uh, and it was called the gunfight at the OK Corral. And uh, you know it's uh, it, it's a it's a big um historical type of thing uh here in the in the southwest united states and uh and so it's quite famous and so of course people from from all over the world come to to look at where Wyatt Earp and the and the uh, the, the, the the Clantons uh had their fateful shootout and so we were there and what we learned subsequently was that the motel that we were staying in was one of only two original buildings in the town of Tombstone. And our motel had been the livery stable uh, before, uh, you know, before it was changed into a budget motel. It was a, for many, 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 many years, it was the livery stable. And then uh, another uh, uh, structure in town was called the Birdcage Theater. And that, that had been absolutely closed down walled up for about 50 years after the town closed due to a flood and it had been kept in its original pristine 1880s condition everything with bullet holes in the walls bullet holes in the ceiling bullet holes in the floors bullet holes in the bars and and bloody billiard tables and oh my gosh i mean you know card tables all over the place uh there's a very, very heavy, heavy, heavy uh, spiritual signature to that place. And and as we went at, and put our things in our room at the motel, we both immediately felt the entities. And that's fine. You know, that's that's no big deal. Uh, that's fairly common with Kundalini people. You'll feel the entity. Uh, and uh, we went to uh, a midnight tour of the birdcage theater, you know, where people go to see the paranormal. And uh, if you look at uh, Centara's uh, uh, photographs, I think she may have posted some on the Yahoo site and on the Facebook site. Uh, 
you know, we, you know, she was able to capture some very, very interesting orb phenomena, spiritual consciousness that is captured by a digital flash. And uh, orb phenomena of a hexagonal quality. So uh, a, a hexagon that had been uh, closed by a circle. So a circle around a hexagon. Very, very interesting things. And, of course, uh, for me, you know, none of it seemed really that astounding. But for the other people there, they were quite enthusiastic about their experience with it. But coming back, uh, we after that tour, we realized that the street that we were on was like the bloodiest street in the whole town. I mean, if you if you wanted to die, then you would have a gunfight at at uh, Allen and Fifth Street in the town of Tombstone. And I think hundreds of people died that way in that one spot, that one intersection, uh, a block away from our, a short, a very, very short block away from, from our motel. I mean, you could see it. You could see it from our doorway. You could see where the people were, were gunfighting and killing each other. Uh, in duels and, and various other activities. And so, of course, you know, there was that heavy, heavy, heavy patina of, of entity spiritual involvement. A lot of it was negative. Uh, uh, many of these individuals did not move on because of, of the level of the vibrational evolution uh, that they were currently experiencing. And uh, many of them were still looking to cause mischief for people. And this is what the Shakti spider at the door was not going to allow it to enter into our room. And, of course, I, I'm very grateful to the Shakti for doing that. Uh, there were other entities inside the motel itself, but, you know, the, the, the more you worry about them, you know, the more irritating they are. So I just stopped worrying about them. And, and you know, if you, don't, if you don't give them a handle to hold on to, then they can't hold on. <laughs> so, yeah, but I that vision that Santara is describing as a giant Shakti spider is not an uncommon vision. That happens more than once. That also happened to me in my early, in the early days of my activation with the Kundalini giant spider. Huge. You know, the, and if you don't know what's going on, of course it's going to scare you to death. But if you do know what's going on, you can actually say thank you. And I'll recommend all of you What's that? Yes, yes. I knew. I knew it. So it was. There was no fear, and I was in deep gratitude. I knew it was. It was wonderful. Now. Yeah. Well, yeah, and and, uh, and I'm really glad you brought up that particular waking vision because because that is one that happens for a lot of people. Uh, I have students right now that you know, uh, as they're as they're awake just laying in bed, watching the sunlight come into the room, they'll also see uh, butterflies or a spider, uh, you know, larger than normal spider coming down. Sometimes they're colored gold or silver or they're sparkling. Sometimes they're black. Sometimes they're red. I mean, sometimes they're a white spider. And these are all spiders of the kundalini that are sent to you by the kundalini to let you know to let you know that Kundalini is alive and well in your life, but not to depend on it, not to depend on the the uh, the vision for validation. Trust that once you have Kundalini opened and activated in you, it's not going away. It's not going to go away ever. It will stay with you the rest of your life. Um, and as you as you harmonize with it and as you uh, research information about it, as you open yourself to the information it wants to give to you, so do you nourish that validation of its presence in you, and so will that presence gain strength and, and uh, importance to you in your life. Some of you who are listening to this have a, have a very, very competent and, and connected connection to your kundalini. Uh, every, you know, people in Europe, Northern Europe, people in India, people in Australia, the United States, Brazil, Peru. There are people.
people out there right now who listen to this radio show, and I know they do because I work with them outside of it, that have a very deep, deep connection with this force within them. And and uh, it is to you that I'm speaking to in such a way. Allow yourself to be affected by these celestial divine visitations, whether they take animal form or human form or just the form of a, of a ball of energy. You know, let your kundalini speak to you. Do not uh, relegate it to the to the activities of uh, the imagination, because once you have kundalini, imagination does not come into it anymore. Kundalini uses the the uh, dream life and the the vision, the the apparatus of vision appreciation, which would be the pineal gland, uh, third eye as ways to communicate its teachings to you. And it's very important that you understand that and that you honor that and you uh, you let that occur for you. Let it occur for you. Uh, don't block your information based upon the science that's around you. And don't let, you know, don't get the idea that I'm anti-science. I am not. Uh, I'm very appreciative of the science and the technology and the internet and on the cell phone and and, uh, you know, the ability to reach many, many, many people all at once. It's very, very beautiful and very good. And, and science definitely has a, has a, you know, a piece of my heart. But it does not, it's not the whole thing. It's not the answer to all questions. Certainly not the, 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 the question of the kundalini. That doesn't lie in the manipulation of, of matter or the manipulation of, Radio waves or light waves or, or, or any of those waves that lies in the in the in the human heart and in the divine uh, repository of energetic expression in the tailbone, the last three vertebrae of the tailbone. So really, really understand that. I love science. I love scientists, but it's not the answers to everything. It's an answer to some of the things, though, and uh, and I want that to be known that that uh, I do honor science and I do honor the uh, the expression of science. Um, let's see, somebody's asking a question on this. Is it about the embodiment of the kundalini? Hmm. Let's see. Uh, Centauri, have you been following that? No, actually, I have not, no. This is, this is to you... Aloha Jay. So, hello, Aloha Jay, if you're still logged in. And I think, are you asking is that is is the the devout Andrew James? Hello, hello, Andrew James. Uh, so is this uh, uh, is your question is the the appearance of a of a celestial divine being uh, an embodiment about the embodiment of the Kundalini? Is that what you're asking? <laughs> hello, Andrew. <laughs> yes. If if that is what you're asking, then I'm going to say yes and no at the same time. I'm going to say yes because uh, ah oh there's Aloha Jay hello Aloha Jay um, and Andrew oh no it is not about that okay well can you can you kind of um, ask me the question perhaps in a different way. You have to have awakened kundalini typically. Now, I'm not going to go real absolutist on this, but uh, you typically will have the awakened kundalini in order to have a divine visitation. However, uh, you know, St. Bernadette didn't have kundalini when she was visited by by the, the kundalini, so I would have to say it is not absolutely necessary. So it would not be about that um, and I see you're typing Aloha J so so let's see oh the feeling of I well you have two eyes you have the big eye and you have the little eye the little eye would be that of the ego and the big eye would be that of the all that is not I am okay so Aloha J is asking uh, if if uh and, and for, forgive me if I don't get this right because I'm reading it. Is it about the embodiment of the Kundalini? 
and is not the I, but the not the I am, but that which is of a divine nature. And so, not the I am, but the I that that is the isness of all things is what that would be about. Aloha che. the isness of all things. And if you're truly in Hawaii, you might look up Alma Kua. Alma Kua is uh, the the uh, Hawaiian Polynesian term of the of the of an aspect of the awakened Kundalini. Amakua. So yeah, so 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 with that in mind, the the divine celestial visitation uh is a life changer. And it shows you the multiplicity of of creation and how it will indeed come and interact with you on a physical level just the same ways that the automatic movements from the Kriyas will come and interact with you on a physical level. And the same way that, that the heat has come to Shruti and is interacting with her on a physical level. Well, these divine personages will come custom to you. So the Kundalini will invite that individual uh, personage or assume the form of that individual celestial divine being as is appropriate to the individual. As is appropriate to the individual. So so Shruti will have it come to her in a way that is appropriate to her. Satara will have it come to her in a way that is appropriate to her. Kristen will have one come to him in a, in, a, in the way that is appropriate to him. As will Andrew James or Aloha J or Guest 3607 whoever that is, okay, it will come to you because, first of all, the kundalini is intimate to you. It is of you. It knows you better than you know yourself. And in that knowledge of you, it can create uh, a, a situation by which you can interact on a awakened physical level. And I mean awakened being you're not dreaming, you're not asleep. Let's just say it's in the middle of the afternoon and you're sitting in your chair and you're about ready to, to have a snack and boom. There's the there's the the divine personage coming to you, uh, uh floating on a cloud, sitting on a carpet, uh, looking at you, smiling and nodding to you to come with him. And then you come with him. But you don't you don't know whether it's your your physical body coming or not. But you go, and you learn, and you're taught, and you learn, and you're taught. And then the next thing you know, you're sitting in your chair about ready to reach for a potato chip, organic free range, of course. Okay. The, the line between the two realities can become extremely blurred to the point of disappearing. Now, you know, without without knowledge of this, this can be a very, very, very difficult thing to to experience. It's scary because you you begin to question, well, what is real? What is real? I just saw Ramakrishna come to me floating on a cloud, sitting on a carpet, and we went for a carpet ride, and it felt like we spent days and days and days uh, being taught, and, and I was listening and I was interacting with this divine personage, and all of a sudden, I, I'm back sitting in my chair reaching for a free-range organic potato chip. Reminds me of a story, of a, of a Sufi story. A king, uh, a big king back in, in, the, in the desert days, uh, heard about this powerful Sufi coming to him and, and coming on to his kingdom. He, and he ordered his men to go out and apprehend this Sufi and bring him into the presence of the king and the and the, and the king asked the Sufi master, and he says, well, if you're a Sufi, then show me what you can do. Show me something that only you can do that cannot be replicated by me or anyone in my kingdom. And the Sufi says, well, what would you like to, what, what would you like to have occur? And, he, and the king responded, well, do something that no one else can do and that, and that, 
that I will know that it was you who did it. And the Sufi slightly turned to his right and then spun to his left. And the next thing the king knew is that he was waking up on the side, uh, on a beach near the ocean, on the side of the ocean. And the waves were kind of crashing around him. And he got up and uh, he was no longer a king. He was just, he was dressed in normal clothing. And he had to walk to the village, and uh, and he walked down the beach, and there's the village, and he walks to the village, and nobody knows him, and uh, he's there for, for you know, he makes friends with the people, and he starts to live as uh, as one among them, and he takes a wife and raises a family, and uh, you know, is a fisherman, and he takes the, the job of a fisherman, and. And he dies, and as soon as he dies, he wakes up back in his throne with the Sufi staring at him, asking him, was that good enough? Are you convinced? Well, this is the type of thing that can happen with the Kundalini. Not typically, though. You know, uh, you, you have to really, you know, you have to go out and challenge a, a Sufi or a or a, or a powerful person within the Kundalini to give that kind of a teaching. But it can happen, and it does happen. Other things that can happen are, you know, the floor will all of a sudden fragment beneath, beneath your feet, and, and you'll be falling through space, and pretty soon as you fall, you'll notice that something is watching you and following you, and, and uh, it, it forms itself into a celestial being. And the celestial being may have a few questions for you. And the next thing you know, you know, you're opening the door to go into the bathroom before the floor fell out from under you. And there you are once again, opening the door to go into the bathroom. And the floor is just as solid as you could be. And there's no, there's no line of disembarkation or embarkation line. There's, there's nothing there that you would have, but you have a memory, complete memory of the experience. You have a complete memory of the experience. So there's a dual reality, you know, and and, and the, the, the dualists and the non-dualists, you know, they love to think that it's their way or, or and, and all other ways are just not theirs. Like, it's either all one, we're all one, one is blessing, da-da-da-da, and the other one is going, oh, no, 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 it's obvious we have a bicameral brain, we have two eyes, we have two feet, we have two genders, you know, so they're the non-dualists. You know, their way is right because it's represented by nature. And the Kundalini says, no, 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 you can both be right at the same time. So, you know, in in experiencing a, a celestial divinity, uh, you can be dual and non-dual at the same time. You can be of this reality and not of this reality at the same time. The two realities can overlay and blend and then dissolve. So one, the, the divine overlay can dissolve and just leave the physical and leave you where you are in the physical reality. Another form of celestial divine uh, visitation is through the shaman uh, traveling. As, as the shaman, uh, say, well, it's got a, uh, an adult, person in front of the shaman and is having certain problems and the shaman goes into the trance and journeys to the the, the three the three heavens and the you know the three heavens represent you know areas within the shamanic belief system where where certain uh, principles reside and and one of those principles will be a power animal will appear and this is a familiar animal for the shaman to partake of and and say, we'll just say, we'll use Centaur's wolf. So the wolf appears to Centaur, she's a shaman. Is that okay, Centaur? Can I make you a shaman? Yes, that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Shaman Centaur uh, is seeing a patient, and the patient has, has uh, some unrequited fears of, uh, say, violence in their lives. And and so, so Shaman Centaur... It goes into her trance, and she travels to the three heavens, and she calls upon her power animal to appear before her. And 
there's the beautiful wolf that appears before her. And she asks, us, like, this 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 poor person, Christian, you know, he seems to be having some problems with unrequited fears in his life. And, and the uh, and the the wolf who can communicate in this realm says, then I will I will find what is happening for this person. And the wolf will find uh, fractured areas of the soul where, say, a person may have experienced extreme trauma as a child, and that extreme trauma continues to have a a burgeoning active signature upon their life. And uh, the wolf comes back and says, Yes, 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 I have found. I have found the the shard of a soul that 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 Chrisom had as a child and that was fractured away due to the to the uh the intensity of the fear that he experienced. And now I give it to you, Shaman Santara, to begin to welcome that shard uh of, of his or that, that fractured part of his soul back to him. And so in that way another uh active and intentional communication with the celestial divinity can be attained. And this is how one learns to walk in in the in the heavenly fields is is one of the one of the main ways is through the service of other people, giving people healings or working for the uh, for the benefit of others who may not be able to help themselves. Uh so that's another example of a shamanistic version of a divine celestial visitation that can happen every day for them. And let me tell you, the more the more you interact on a on an intentional level, the greater uh, the communication strength becomes. But the one thing that, that that I do want to differentiate is that this is not working with entities. This is not working with entities. This is only working through the design and and the signature of the awakened Kundalini. Okay, so this is not Reiki in that sense. You know, you don't need uh, sigils or tattoos or drawings or anything of that level. You don't need an attunement. Uh, None of these types of things, these... These are aspects of the awakened Kundalini, and and though others can can kind of try to present themselves that way, uh, it is not. It is not that way. You need to be very, very, very discerning uh, when you're when you're exploring these areas with other people. Uh, what I will suggest you do is I will suggest that you find a a teacher or a source of information that has knowledge that already resonates with your Kundalini already resonates with your kundalini let them let yourself go with that resonance let yourself become uh infused with the information that that your kundalini resonates with okay don't go for the for the expensive thing because you get what you pay for it because you don't always get what you pay for don't go for the inexpensive thing because it's the only thing that you can afford because some things, you know, some things are free. Some good things are free. Okay. Um, be very, very discerning. Have that conversation with the Kundalini, as I mentioned to Shruti. Shruti, have that conversation with the Kundalini and begin to look at it from that perspective. Uh, if you wish to to contact me privately, well, you can do so, and that email address is K Fire for All. So that's K F I R E F O R A L L at yahoo dot com. And another way you can reach me is on Facebook at Chrisum dot Kundalini, and uh, we have a, some communities out there that you can partake of as well. And one is the the, in the Yahoo uh, network, uh, Yahoo Groups, and it's called Kundalini Awakening Systems One at Yahoo Groups. And we also have the same group on Facebook under the same name, Kundalini Awakening Systems One Facebook group. And we also have the uh, Facebook group of Kundalini Exclamation Point. And we also have a Kundalini Ashram group on uh, Facebook, as well as 
Kundalini Healing on Facebook. And we have Kundalini Healing on Yahoo as well. So there are plenty of communities for you to partake of uh, within the Kundalini Awakening Systems network of communities so that you can kind of just feel your way around and see what you think and partake in ways that you feel are appropriate to you. Um, Believe these divine celestial visitations. They are real. The closest thing to being unreal is is to not validate the blending of the divine upon the physical reality. Don't do that. Validate this blending. Let it teach you. And and, and allow yourself to be moved by it. You will be typically moved by it in a very deep and beautiful way. What accompanies these divine visitations is a level of bliss and ecstasy that uh, goes beyond words. I just can't, there are no words to explain the amount of love and joy and ecstatic presence that comes with these visitations. And as I mentioned to Shruti, uh, feel the heat in your heart. Feel the grace beginning to express itself through your heart. And if you felt the, the real pull before a few years ago, as, as I mentioned to Shruti, well, Use that memory to reinvigorate that experience for you and then begin to live your life through that reinvigoration of love for all that is. For the all that is. Really begin to harmonize that way. I would like you to know that there is going to be a Kundalini Awakening seminar event in Boston on October 19th and 20th. Uh, Liz is is the uh, organizer. She lives in Boston. I won't use her last name, but I would like you to email her at L-Z-H-A-O, the number six, at Comcast.net. And uh, and I will be there. I'll be giving the seminar, and uh, we'll be giving Shaktipat as well, and Ishti invitations. Uh, these are beautiful, extraordinary events. I don't have too many of them. Uh, I'm trying to have more. Santara, Amelia Santara will be there as well. And uh, so it gives you a great opportunity to meet her in person. She will be giving uh, Kundalini healing and Kundalini-infused therapeutic touch. We may be blessed with the presence of Sarkis, another Kundalini healer who also uses Kundalini-infused therapeutic touch. And so there are many opportunities to to make connections and to network with other people and to receive uh, a level of divine grace that really isn't available anywhere else uh, in the world. Uh, If you you listen to any of these radio broadcasts and if if this is a frequency of the Kundalini experience that you want to have, then I'll suggest that you come to the Boston Kundalini Awakening Seminar, October 19th and 20th, Contact Liz at LZHAO6 at Comcast.net. That's the number six. And uh, do you have anything to add, Satara? Um, to that, oh, I'm very much looking forward to, the, uh, to meeting with Liz again and with you. And I suppose maybe for the people who listen regularly to this show, they know that for the past month I was spending time at the Ashram in Santa Rosa. And it was a month filled with so many blessings and graces, and I'm so filled with gratitude for every moment of it. And I'd like to thank my dear husband for supporting my Kundalini process um, so that I could go and do that. And I want to thank you, my teacher, Chrism, for all the gifts and the graces, you know, that I was given through the divine Kundalini within you. And, and for those who are listening and who are students of Chrism's, I would... If I could suggest maybe or encourage you to journey to the ashram in Santa Rosa and to spend some time in the presence of your teacher, um, where then I would really encourage you to do that so that you can be with the teachings of the Kundalini as given through Chrism. So, yeah, so thank you, Chrism, for that. And um, oh. it's also good to be back home again. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, I, I too would like to echo the, the gratitude to John. O'Connor for his steadfast um, support 
of you in your in your Kundalini awakening uh, process and and in in allowing and helping you to come out here. And uh, so, John, a, a, a wave of hello to you and a wave of gratitude to you as well. And I know that uh, Amelia will be visiting France soon, and so the French will be able to partake of her love and her grace uh, uh, on, on one of the beaches, I guess, there in France. Is that right, Amelia? We're going to the Vendée area. The Vendée, I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. Yes, on the on the western coast of France. Um next weekend, so I'm looking forward to that as well. So anybody, <laughs> anybody being... that lives there, go visit Amelia. <laughs> well, if there's anybody who lives there um, um, that is on the CARS, the CARS group or that would like to contact me, I'm going to give my number because I love meeting other Kundalini people. So if I can give my address, it would be kundalinimatters at gmail.com and for sure I'd be open to meeting with anybody who's living there. So thanks. That's that's it for me, Chris. Well, great. Well, great. Well, thank you, Amelia Santara, and thank you, everybody, who has called in and who has listened. Um, Aloha Jay and Andrew James and all the other guests, uh, thank you for for joining the uh, the chat room and, and asking the question. Aloha Jay, I hope I came close to, to answering it um, for you, and then we will be coming back once again next Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Pacific Standard Time, for another next show. Next Wednesday. Uh, next next yes. Wednesday, Chris, and you said Friday. <laughs> oh, my, my apologies, yes. Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next Wednesday. <laughs> next Wednesday at 3 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. Um, we'll be coming back and doing this again, and I would like to extend an invitation to all of you who are here today to come then. And in the meantime, uh, May your kundalini shakti explode within you with love and grace and joy and harmony for yourself and all those around you. Thank you for listening.